Hey guys, Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop. One of the exciting things about buying an electric instrument is that you get to buy an amp to go with it. Now you've you've just gone through all this decision making process and picking an instrument. You're like, do I really have to go through this again with an amp? There's so many choices. Uh, well, the good news is, yeah, you get to go through this again. And so I want to give you guys maybe a little bit of education about some of the uh, the things that are going on in the amp world that will help you make a good decision so you pick an amp that's going to work the best for your situation. Uh, I want to go through a little bit of terminology uh, and then we'll get into some basics of amplifiers and we're in this video we're just going to touch on a couple of the little more advanced topics. We're going to try to keep this sort of like amps 101. This isn't a graduate level course just yet. So vocabulary, one of the first things, you've already heard me use amp and amplifier, both of those words. Those are synonyms. Um, amp is just short for amplifier. Um, one of the other things we'll talk about very soon are jacks. A jack is anything that you plug into on the amp. And you will see that there are different kinds of jacks, input jacks and output jacks. Input jack is something that you plug in that goes into the amp. And an output jack is something that comes out of the amp. It's not just the speaker. Sometimes there are other outputs from that amp. Um, EQ means equalization, and that's where we can change the, the uh, we'll say the flavor of our sound a little bit. Um, we can turn up the, the treble or the bass, which makes something brighter and crisper, or we can kind of tone that down and make it uh, duller if we want to. We can make something a little richer. We can make it a little thinner. That's what happens in the EQ section. And then you'll also see sometimes the two letters FX. If I say that fast, it sounds like FX, which is effects, like reverb, delay, flangers, chorus, that sort of thing. So uh, sometimes you'll see that abbreviation FX for the effects. Now, there are two basic configurations that we'll see in amps. Sometimes you watch a rock concert, you'll see that there are these Marshall stacks sitting on stage. Um, and they have two components. There's a head up top there, which is where all the, the, no, the knobs and dials and stuff are. It's also where all the electronics are inside the amp that make it work. And then there are the two cabinets underneath here. We'll call those cabinets or speakers. Uh, technically, the speaker is the round thing that's in there that moves. Um, but sometimes we'll also call that, you know, technically the box that that speaker is in is called a cabinet, but people will often use those interchangeably, the speaker or the cabinet. Um, the other type of amp is a, the other configuration of amp is a combo amp. And this is the one you'll probably see the most of. And it's where the head and the speaker are both in the same wooden cabinet. Um, so this one is a combo amp. Most amps that you're going to see are combo amps. It means you got one box, you pick it up, carry it with you. It has all the electronics in it, and it has the speaker in it. All right, another thing I want you to understand is there are four different levels of signals. Each of these levels are really more of a range. But uh, mic level is the very, very lowest. And it could be as little as, uh, as two millivolts. Very, very small level of signal. And that's the kind of signal that a microphone puts out. Instrument level is a little bit higher. That's the, the level that your instrument puts out. And that could be around 10x higher. So you could be looking at 20 millivolts to, you know, a few hundred millivolts, depending on your instrument. And then line level is roughly one volt. And again, line level is, it's a range. But when we talk about the, the top end, that's going to be the, the loudest. So the loudest thing in line level is usually a volt somewhere in the 1 to 1.4 volt range. And then speaker level could be anywhere up to uh, tens of thousands of uh, tens of thousands of volts. It could be several, several times higher um, because that's enough to be moving speaker. Speaker level stuff, that's high voltage. That's stuff that's going to, if you grab onto uh, the wires in a speaker level, it's, it's going to bite you. All right, so one of the questions we get a lot is gain versus volume. How are those different? We have a video that really digs deep into gain versus volume, or a little deeper than I'm going to go here. And you can find it. Uh, I posted it the same day as this one. So um, you can tell because I got the same shirt on. So if you want to learn a little bit more about gain and volume, I would say check out that other video. But basically, gain is input level, and volume is output level. So that's, uh, that's going to help you there. 
Now let's get into how an amplifier works. These are the sections of an amp. Input, there's a preamp section, EQ, effects, and then a power amp and a speaker. So those are sort of the sections. We're gonna go through a couple of terms that you might see in each one. Input, there are basically three different kinds of input jacks. There's a quarter inch input, which is sort of the, the, the instrument cable that plugs into your violin or your cello, and then that plugs directly into the amp. That's a quarter inch input. An XLR or a mic cable um, has sort of those, those three little posts in it. And then you might see a combo jack, and that can actually be used by a quarter inch cable and an XLR cable. So when you see that weird looking combo jack, and you're like, gosh, I, I don't know, you can, you can actually plug your quarter inch or your XLR into that same jack. Pretty cool. Um, you may see something called phantom power. Um, and that is used to power microphones that sometimes do require power. If you've got an instrument and that's the only thing you're plugging in, don't worry about the phantom power, just leave it off. Uh, phantom power only works on an XLR cable or a, uh, it comes out of the XLR jack or a combo jack and only goes through the mic cable. So if you're using a microphone that needs power and you plug it in using an XLR cable into either the XLR or the combo jack, then you can push that phantom power button and it will power that microphone. So we got input and then preamp is the next section. Uh, the preamp section is what brings your mic or your instrument level up to line level so it can be processed by the amplifier. Two different types of preamps. There's tube and solid state. We'll get into that in a, in a minute. Um, they both color your tone a little bit. Tube is gonna color it a little differently than solid state covers, colors your tone. And, and tube amps are more likely to put distortion into your sound. And this is, uh, these are controlled by the gain knob or sometimes they'll say an input knob. Um, sometimes you'll see different uh, terminology on there, either gain or input. But that's where you're gonna, you're gonna control the level of how hard we're hitting that preamp. And this is to compensate for the fact that some instruments are louder than others. Like a YEV, a Yamaha YEV is a very loud instrument you probably leave that preamp turned down a little bit. Uh, an Aurora Classic is a little uh, quieter instrument. You may have your preamp turned up a little bit. Well, and yeah. you just use your ears. As you turn that up, is, um, if it sounds better to you, because it does color your tone a little bit, if it sounds better to you, then it's better. Um, the next section is EQ. This is where we shape our sound. You'll see highs, mids, and lows, or maybe you'll see treble, mid-range, and bass. Uh, each one of those, the frequencies are going to vary by amp. Um, and as a hint, the low frequencies don't usually do much on a violin. They, they will affect a cello a little more. We have a couple of videos in our Classical to Radical series that you can find here in our YouTube channel. There are two videos, one that gets a little more into the science of things, and then the other one, maybe some practical applications for how you're going to shape your signal. All right, and then there's an FX section. Uh, most amps only have reverb or maybe one other effect. The Boss Katana series has a whole lot more in it, um, but this, is, this all comes after the input into the preamp, into the EQ section, and then the effects. And it's important to know that this is where some amps will have a send and return. So they'll have some jacks on the back of the amp that you can actually, your signal will go through the first part of the amp, then you can send it out to your pedal board, and then back into the amp before the power amp section. So you can use that, or you can run from your instrument into your pedal board first, and then into the amplifier. So those are two very legitimate choices. Lots of, uh, lots of people will pick either one, and, uh, and you can kind of experiment to decide which one is best for you. The next section is the power amp. This is what makes it loud. Um, I want you to know that not all watts are created equal. If I'm comparing from two different manufacturers, I may find that a, that a 120 watt Fishman amp is not nearly as loud as a 25 watt matchless amp because you're using different technologies. Um, but if I'm comparing two amps from the same manufacturer in the same series, then it gives me some, some meaningful comparisons. So if I look at the Fishman Loudbox Mini, which is 60 watts, and the Artist, which is 120 watts, that 60 and 120, tell, that's a meaningful comparison because it's apples to apples comparison. Now, just be aware that twice the power does not make something twice as loud. 
The 120 watt amp is not twice as loud as a 60 watt amp. It's about three to five dB louder. Um, if I want to be double the volume, it actually requires 10 times the power. That's just the physics of how this thing works. Now, we're to the last section, which is the speaker. Sound is moving air. And if we want low frequencies, we need big speakers. So if you're a cellist or you're a violinist with an octave pedal or a two octave pedal even, got to know that if you really want those low frequencies to be shaking your chest, you're going to need big speakers. A little desktop amp with a three inch speaker in it cannot move the same amount of air that a, uh, that a Boss Katana with a 10 inch speaker or a 12 inch speaker in it can. So just be aware of that. There's also a thing called bi-amping. Some of the Fishman amps have a bi-amp system, which means two amps. In the Fishman Loudbox Artist, there's actually two amplifiers. There's a two power amps. There's a 100 watt power amp that drives the big speaker and a 20 watt power amp that drives the, the tweeter, that there's a knob that you can turn up the tweeter up and down. And that's what brings in like the brilliance and the sparkle and all that for you. And then the other thing, we'll look at full range. This will be the last slide. We're going to look at full range. Um, the one on the bottom you see is a fairly flat response. The, the bottom axis on each of these graphs is frequency from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. That's uh, the range of human hearing. The one on the bottom is actually a theoretical. There aren't any speakers that any of us can afford that actually look like that. I have a very flat response on all frequencies. Uh, the vertical axis is volume, if you didn't get that. So the one on top is a more typical guitar speaker. You see at lower frequencies, it does not, it's not as loud. So if you're trying to put your tracks or something through it, it's not going to be, that thump isn't really going to be hitting. You also see it's got a little bump at about 2K and 4K, uh, which is something to be aware of. And then the frequencies fall off as you get into the higher range, which means you're not going to have a whole lot of sparkle. That frequency response is actually perfect for a guitar. It may or may not be ideal for your violin, especially if you're wanting to run tracks through that amp. So you want to look at the, the frequency response of the amp that you're looking at. And that's, uh, that's going to be really important as you make your decision. So I hope that this basic uh, tutorial gives you a little bit more information about amplifiers and helps you understand what's one of the things that you're going to want to look for as you're picking an amp. And uh, I hope that's helpful for you. Okay, thanks for hanging out.